Welcome to Cable's Farm. Today we're going to do a second of my post-COVID-19 talks. And we're going to be talking about uh, two little pistols, which I bought, uh, at least I didn't buy the pistols, I bought uh, a tin box containing a load of rusty parts and a couple of uh, stocks, one of which was very badly broken. Um, I paid a ridiculous amount of money for them, um, which I'm not going to tell you what it was, uh, because uh, I was looking for a good project for cablesfarm.co.uk and because they were rather sweet and because of the history of them. Now, let's have a look at these two pistols. Um, the oldest of them is this little fellow, which is a sort of, I suppose you'd call it, a small overcoat pistol model on. Uh, it's got a 40 bore barrel, uh, which, is four in oops, which is four inches long, and the whole thing is about eight and a quarter inches long. Uh, it's flintlock, obviously. Um, it's got a uh, non-rainproof pan, old style pan, but uh, it does have a support for the uh, frizzen bearing and it's got a little roller uh, on the frizzen spring and it has a safety catch behind the cock. Uh, so there's, that's basically a little pistol. It's marked uh, J. Harding, uh, Borough, London. So little, little pistol. It's got a little bit of engraving on it. Uh, the cock unfortunately is not original. I had to put that on. Um, but uh, the rest of it, all the parts are original as far as I can tell. A uh, little, a little ramrod. The style of this uh, little pistol, um, where would I date it? Probably I would date that from uh, any time after about 1885, 1890, perhaps a little later, because of this uh, the safety catch on the back here. The rest of it <coughs> could have been made any time after about 1870 um, but uh, John Harding um, of Borough actually only started um, making pistols uh, under that name in 1816. He was the successor to H.W. Uh, Mortimer and H.W. Uh, Mortifer and Sons and, and his son. And so he was the eventual successor of um, that uh, business. So this pistol must therefore have been made after 1816. So it's quite late in the Flintlock era. Remember, uh, percussion, the, the principle for scythe invented in 1807, uh, and from about 18... Hmm, 25 or so, you you would most, certainly from 1830, most non-military guns uh, would have started to be percussion. So this is getting towards the end of the, um, of the flintlock era, but not actually, not past the end of it. So post, post 1816. Right, so that's really all you can tell from that little pistol. The other one, which is very similar, uh, same same bore, uh, same length of barrel, four inches, but it's an inch, uh, seven, it's seven and a quarter overall, so it's an inch shorter than the other one. Uh, this one is marked uh, J. Harding and Son, uh, and on the uh, on the on the flat on the barrel, J. Harding and Son, uh, Borough, London. Now, uh, J. Harding took his 
uh, son into partnership in the business in 1833. So this pistol must have been made after 1833, uh, in which uh, in which case it's really a little bit anachronistic because in 1833 we'd have probably been in the era of uh, little percussion pocket pistols. So this is is slightly odd. Um, now the the character the, the the unusual thing about this pistol and the thing that makes it interesting uh, is that here on the lock, which I'll show you in close up, um, is uh, a broad arrow stamp with an arrow pointing upwards underneath the crown. And that uh, is repeated on the barrel uh, flat here, uh, the, the arrow and the crown. And they're quite deeply stamped. Uh, and that was a mark that was used on pistols supplied to the post office. Uh, and, and quite distinct, not used for anything else. Not always put on post office pistols, but it was used by Mortimer and uh, by Harding to mark post office pistols. So this... This is a post office pistol. Now, uh, that makes it quite interesting because uh, it's late, as we said. This one, the one marked with the post office uh, stamp is post-1833, which puts it really quite late. Uh, so if we look at the history of the post office now for a little while and think about... Uh, the dating of that. Uh, in the early part of the 18th century, um, there were mail coaches. The mail service had been running more or less uh, since the time of Henry VIII for government purposes. Uh, and uh, towards the middle and of, of the uh, 18th century, it was a, a means of, of transmitting private letters as well. So the post, post, post boys uh, rode horses or, or, or coaches um, and they delivered uh, the mail. At the same time, in parallel with that, uh, was a, were the, um, uh, the, the coaches the, um, and they, uh, they were running um, a service uh, for the carriage of uh, people and parcels. And there was a, a prohibition on the, on the coach stagecoaches from carrying letters, uh, just as there are restrictions now on what uh, were recently on what private couriers could carry. So they weren't allowed to carry the mail. So if you wanted to send a letter, uh, the stagecoaches were quicker than the mail coaches. So if you wanted to send a letter quickly, you put it in a parcel. So that was the, the thing. Anyway, in 1874, um, that came to an end because they basically decided that the stagecoaches uh, could carry letters and Therefore, you might just as well combine the two. And so the stagecoaches became the mail coaches. And the, uh, it was decreed that every coach that was going to carry mail had to have a guard. And the guards had to be armed. And they were armed with a blunderbuss and a pistol. Uh, now, we know what those pistols and were like because there are still a lot of them. There's a large collection of them in the Royal Armouries, uh, but they were brass barreled, uh, horse pistol sized, and generally had something like uh, for you for His Majesty's mail coach uh, engraved around the, the muzzle. So those are identifiable, and there are quite a lot of them. Um, and then. Um, 
So they, so the male coaches, the, the stage coaches were then, were then the same as the male coaches and they were all armed, but no mention of these. So these had some function within the post office, which was not uh, the main function of uh, being carried by the guards, which makes common sense because a little teeny 40 bore pistol like that is really uh, not going to be very effective against a highwayman armed with say a dueling pistol or something. So these little pistols would have been carried in the pocket uh, and it's thought that they were used by inspectors of coaches. So that there was um, the whole the whole stagecoach business was very highly regulated. Uh, the coaches ran on a timetable which frankly uh, would make most trains nowadays look awful. I mean they were expected despite the fact that their maximum speed was about six miles an hour on average and they had to put up with terrible roads. Um, they were expected to keep time which in the early days was quite interesting um, because there was no standard time across the country. Every place ran on a clock that was set at its local noon, i.e. when the sun was overhead at that place. And so as you moved across the country, then the, 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 the time shifted a bit. And so it was really a very complicated business in the early days um, to keep your coaches running on a timetable. Uh, and the, the one thing that the, that the coachman had uh, was a very accurate, very good watch. And that was what he worked on. So they were, so these pistols were, were almost certainly carried by somebody who wasn't mounted, who went round and inspected the coaches. So there we are. Now, th so this one was definitely a post office uh, issued pistol. So, uh, quite a lot of the pistols uh, which were issued were not marked with the, the, the crown and arrow, the broad arrow and crown. So it's quite possible that this was also uh, an issued pistol to the post office, but it's quite possible uh, <coughs> that somebody just picked it up uh, and put it with the other one. So I have, I really have no idea. This one, uh, the, the, um, the Harding one, which is not marked, uh, was in a very bad condition when I got it. A lot of the woodwork was missing. If you go on cablesfarm.co.uk, uh, you'll be able to see. So now, if you'd like to come and look over my shoulder, we'll have a little look in detail at these pistols. Right, now we can uh, have a look in detail at these pistols. So uh, I'm going to put on some uh, stills of the actual detail later on. So that should be perfectly possible to see it better. Here we are. Uh, there's, uh, this is the unpost office marked one by Harding. So uh, Harding's name is on the uh, lock. The lock is... Um, somewhat old-fashioned it's just got an ordinary old pan um, the cock is actually a replacement so you can't attach too much significance to that there's a roller on the frizzen um, it's got a safety behind the cock uh, what else can i say about it the trigger guard uh, is engraved a little bit of engraving on the pipe there so um, there's a, a teeny bit of engraving on the tail of the rock so it's not it's not a, and a bit of bit of engraving a sort of stand of arms appearing uh, on the tang of the, uh, of the of the false breach oh no it's actually a breach i think um, so there's there it is it's about um, they're about 40 bore so they're 40 bore, they've got a little wooden ramrod. The barrels are, are obviously pretty short. Uh, although I'm not sure that ramrod is quite long enough to reach to the bottom of it. Um, so that's that one. 
uh, if you compare the two, um, you can get them in such a way that you can. This one you'll notice has a slightly bolder, bigger butt than that one. I think the locks are more or less, uh, the locks are not interchangeable, I think, but more or less identical. Um, the cock on the other one, this is, uh, sorry, this is the one we should be looking at now. Um, this is the, the J. Harding and Son one. This is the one with the post office mark on it, which uh, is here. And again, uh, you can see it quite clearly there. So this is the, uh, this is the guaranteed post office one. Um, and fortunately, it was the one that was in quite good condition. So I didn't have to rebuild the stock. So that's also 40 bore. Um, whether the ramrods, it looks, I mean, apart from the bits that I put on it to re restore it, which which were, the, I, I, I redid the cocks on these because they were, well, one of them already had a, um, had a replacement cock and the other one had the cock missing. I rebuilt, I made uh, new safety catches for them. Uh, and this one, it's this one, it's difficult to see now. This one, yeah, the, the um, most of the stock here was broken away. So I've rebuilt, I've rebuilt that. Um, but they're, they're a nice little pair of pistols. And um, like, like the police pistols I showed any more so, they're really quite rare. I mean, this one with the post office marking on it, uh, I'd, I'd be very surprised if there were half a dozen like it. Uh, it's just, just a shame it's got a replacement cock on it. Um, but, uh, but there are not many around like that. Uh, and this one, I'm sure, was also supplied to the post office. Um, so there we are. A nice little pair of post office pistols used by, carried by the inspector of coaches, we think. <laughs>